Hi guys, it's Psalmak here and welcome to the next episode of a sneak peek into Metagrid version 2. Long time no here, but nevertheless we are working hard and uh, today I'm very happy to tell you that uh, tomorrow we're going to push Metagrid version 2 better for Apple review. Yeah, so for us it's a big milestone that we have reached and we hope that after a uh, few days or a week or two when they are uh, done with their review we'll be able to uh, put uh, Metagrid version 2 beta uh, into your hands. So yeah, I'm quite happy about it. I'm very happy actually about it. And um, today I'm going to talk about faders and the new type of action that we have added which is MIDI step action and in the next episode I'm going to talk about content management. Um, so let's dive in. Uh, today I'm going to use Metagrid uh, with Live and I'm going to show you our uh, fader options and uh, the MIDI step action that is going to be quite useful for people using MIDI and MIDI uh, sequencers. So let's dive in. Okay, so I've got Ableton Live running in front of me and I've got the um, simple grid uh, that I've made for Live Profile on my iPad. Um, now I'm, I'm going to create a fader. So um, I press edit, I go into the edit mode, I go into the layout mode, and I select the first column. Uh, first of all, I have to clear the buttons. So uh, by default, when the grid is created, it's populated, pre-populated with the buttons. So I'm going to, because these are the most uh, uh, popular objects for MetaGrid, right? Uh, I'm going to clear them. Right, so I've got uh, um, six empty objects. When I go out from the editor, you can see that empty objects are not visible on the uh, dashboard. Right, so again, I go into the um, editor. In the object editor, these uh, empty slots are not visible as well. You cannot select them. But when I go into the layout mode, uh, they are there. So uh, again, I select the first column and I press merge and I've got a huge empty slot for my new fader. So I add, I, I press the Add button and I select the fader. And here we go, all right. So I've added a fader. So let me go into the object editor again. And uh, yeah, uh, so here is the fader and here are the options for the fader. So we can choose the cap size, is the cap type. So, and the size for the cap as well. Of course, I can uh, select uh, the fader with no cap and I can make it uh, bigger and uh, perhaps very big. Oh, I prefer thin uh, faders and let's uh, make it a um, circular cap. Um, and of course, I can use some presets uh, for the color schemes. Um, let's, let's leave it um, the pink, um, then I've got some color options. So I can customize the text color, the cap color, uh, the cap text color, value indicator, it means the active line and the background line, the passive line. Of, uh, and uh, there are some fader options. Relative to the finger, it means that uh, the fader will not jump when I touch uh, the fader area, and but it will move accordingly, uh, keeping the you know relative distance uh, from the cap and my finger. And cap only, it means that the fader will react only when I uh, touch the cap, right? And um, so I go uh, to the um, dashboard, and here I am. As you can see, the fader is very reactive. The value is, uh, that is being changed is visible uh, on the cap and also underneath the fader. So the name of the fader temporarily changes into the uh, current value. Okay, but what to do uh, to make the fader send CC values? So again, uh, I go to the edit mode, uh, edit object mode, and um, let's, add, uh, let's create a macro. So uh, I will use the continuous controller and um, I'm going to use the um, CC3 uh, on channel one. It's going to be sent on the meta system uh, MIDI port. The value is not relevant in that case because it's uh, the fader that is going to be setting, uh, the, is going to set the values uh, for, that C, for that CC, all right? So uh, basically I'm ready. So the fader has got the macro assigned. So I go out 
I press done and I go to my life and uh, I want to assign it to, well, let me use send A on track uh, 4. So I will move the fader. Now it's assigned to this um, controller in life. I go out of MIDI and uh, let me check it. Oh, I, I can see that I've already assigned it. I mean, MIDI free, uh, MIDI CC free to uh, to sense B as well on uh, track number three. But anyway, well, we've got the double visual effect, uh, and of course, uh, MetaGrid is uh, supports by directional MIDI communication. When I move the fader, uh, when I move the uh, controller in live, the fader reacts as well and smooth, and it's. Uh, quite reactive. Uh, so um, here I am uh, with my fader. Now, um, as I said, we have introduced MIDI CC uh, step uh, action, and I'm going to create two buttons. Uh, one is going to increment, and the, the second one is going to decrement the values uh, for the same CC that uh, we have already assigned to the fader. So let me do it. So I'm going to create a macro, and I'm going to choose the MIDI steps. And it's going to go on MIDI CC3, and uh, it's going to send the, uh, the value, uh, it's going to increment uh, the value uh, for the given step. And uh, now, I'm uh, sorry, I'm going to give it an icon. So here we are. Uh, let me choose an arrow. Uh, it's going to be the up arrow. And let me choose the layout. Okay, and here we are. And let's do it for another button. So I'm going to create the macro. I mean, again, MIDI steps, uh, MIDI step three. And uh, it's going to uh, increment by this value. Done. And uh, again, arrow icon. Uh, this time it's going to go down. Oh, and I've forgotten. Uh, uh, the macro should decrement uh, the value. So I'm going to tap this arrow over there. And now it's down. So I'm done. And again, with the layout. And I've got two buttons that are going to increment and decrement uh, the value. Let's check. All right. So I'm pressing. And uh, it goes down by the step that we have. Uh, already assigned okay but it's not all uh, MIDI um, CC's can be uh, incremented or decremented in a uh, through the ranges value ranges right so I'm going to modify the macro so um, now I tab the CC steps and let's say I'll, I'm going to choose some random values, right? So nothing meaningful. Let's close it. And uh, let's do the same with, the, with this button over there. And again, some random stuff. Okay, so now instead of uh, cycling through the uh, predefined step, uh, so in incrementing and decrementing by this given step. Now these buttons uh, will change the values, the CC value, by the uh, specified ranges, which is very useful, for example, while working with expressions and uh, articulations uh, or any meaningful uh, you know, steps uh, of that changes uh, sound parameters and characteristics. So these were faders and MIDI uh, CC step action in MetaGrid version 2. I hope you find it interesting and you will find it useful. As I said, uh, we have reached a huge milestone for us and tomorrow we're going to push it to push MetaGrid version 2 better uh, for upper review. So soon you're going to have it on your desk and uh, you're going to experiment with all the new uh, functionalities and improvements. So keep your fingers crossed for us, uh, stay safe and uh, see you during our next sneak peek 
we are going to talk about um, content management, uh, about uh, profiles, workspaces, grids, importing, Im exporting uh, the content. Um, and hopefully that's going to be our last sneak peek. Um, so stay safe, as I said, and see you next time. Bye-bye.